Yeah, I'm ready here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started because uh, we do want to make sure we've, we've, I think, gotten everybody who's going to be on. And if, if we need to uh, join other people at the time, then we will certainly be able to do that. Um, uh, so I'll, we'll go ahead and get this uh, particular uh, organization, uh, our workshop started. Uh, good morning. My name is Mark Birdie. I'm the executive director of the Alabama Coastal Foundation. Uh, we have a great workshop for you, uh, provided for you all today. Uh, we have a, um, uh, it was basically a list of, of individuals who are uh, very, very well knowledgeable in the subject. Oops, excuse me. Let me get back to my, there, excuse me, where my, my technical, this is the, this is the good technical difficulty. Uh, uh, so Janice, yep. um, yeah, all right, here we go. We're going to start this again. Get the chat out. All right, one last time. And now, and now we're ready to start this uh, workshop. So, uh, all right, good morning. My name is Mark Birdie. Uh, I'm executive director of the Alabama Coastal Foundation. Uh, you'll be hearing presentations from Randy Sheenfield with the Department of An Alabama Department of Environmental Management, as well as from Ted Miker, who's with the Mobile County Health Department. We'll have plenty of time to do Q&A, and then we'll wrap up the workshop, as I said, within an hour. Um, I want to go ahead and point out for our online workshops, if you've not done one before, if you put your cursor over the three, um, four little dots will show up at the bottom, and there's a little microphone at the first thing that you see. So if you can click on the, the microphone so that it is red, um, and that way we, we will not be able to hear you unless you want to speak, and then you can take it off of mute. Uh, but otherwise, up in the top right corner of your screen, there's a little uh, it looks like a dialog box, a little uh, chat function. So if you can click that and then you can type up anything you want to in that uh, to ask questions. We're monitoring that as we go along. Um, but it is uh, that's the way we'll be asking questions throughout. And then once you uh, have had a chance to do that, um, we will uh, wrap up again. Um, uh, the, 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 the have, please feel free to ask questions, but we will wrap up by 11 o'clock and uh, we'll just be able to recording this. So in case you want to watch it later on, we'll be able to show that to you. So uh, unless there are other uh, questions that we need to get into right now, uh, we're going to go ahead and proceed uh, with our presentation. Um, we are uh, Alabama Coastal Foundation. We've been around for uh, 26 years now to improve and protect Alabama's coastal environment. Uh, we do that through cooperation, education, and participation. When we say cooperation, that just means we will work with you, uh, individual, nonprofit, uh, governmental sector, private sector. Uh, we don't care what a political affiliation you are in. Uh, we, you know, as long as you're going to do something positive for our coastal environment, we're going to work with you. Um, our education uh, initiatives are uh, a lot. We have K through 12 education, both in class and a lot of the stuff we just put online for the last two months. We have a wetland compliance workshops for realtors and lawyers needing those continuing education units. Uh, we do a lot of other workshops and gatherings to help educate people about our coastal environment. But then really the participation part, I always say that 90% of what happens uh, is because of our volunteers. So we hope that you'll um, take the time to uh, volunteer for either for one of our education programs or to a cleanup. Uh, I just mentioned that we are uh, 26 years old and have a five-year strategic plan, uh, but our, our funding comes from individual donations, corporate sponsorships, memberships, foundation grants, contract work, and selling merchandise. So if you want to go to our website, joinacf.org, you can uh, get that information. But without any uh, further ado, I'm going to Go ahead and introduce Randy Shaneyfeld with the Alabama Department of Environmental Management. So, Randy. Thank you, Mark. This is uh, Randy Shaneyfeld um, with the Alabama Department of Environmental Management here in the Mobile office. I work with uh, coastal programs, and I'm the uh, regional um, coordinator for our coastal non-point source program. So today we're going to talk about, uh, as you see here on, on this slide, OSDS programs, which is the federal term for on-site uh, sewage distribution systems or septic tanks. So you, wherever you see the OSDS term in my presentation, I'm going to give you some background. Um, this program was um, created in 1990, uh, um, 
1990, and every coastal state has to have a coastal non-point source program. So we um, define the, the management area as all the watersheds in coastal Alabama, which is Mobile and Baldwin counties. Uh, if you see here, the different colored sections are drainage areas that go into the Delta, into Mobile Bay, and the surrounding coastal rivers. So this is our um, management area. Next. And it's comprised of even smaller drainage areas, which are uh, we refer to as hydrologic unit codes, and we call these HUCs. And uh, they're at a 12-digit level, which is the smallest level that the federal um, offices recognize. Uh, we have about 110 of these sub-watershed drainage areas within our management area. Next. Uh, one thing about septic tanks is that the ADM is not directly the regulatory agency for septic tanks in the state of Alabama. That falls to our Alabama Department of Public Health and our local health departments. Um, we have uh, represented both counties, Mobile and Baldwin County. Um, the only way we would get involved is if, at, if something that was happening with the septic tank actually violated the Clean Water Act. And um, then the health department would get in touch with us, and then we would contact EPA and their enforcement team, and it would become, you know, a uh, thirty-seven thousand dollar per day violation if it was, uh, um, you know, found to be the case. So you really don't want us to get involved in it. Um, it's much nicer to work this out with your health, local health department. Okay, next. But what we are trying to do is promote education and awareness. So uh, when we developed this program back in the early uh, uh, late 1999s when we started working on this program, we put together a coastal Alabama uh, non-point source handbook. And non-point source is any type of pollution that doesn't come from a permit. Um, the um, non-permitted activities are things like if you put a lot of fertilizer on your lawn and it washes into your storm sewer and causes algal blooms in the creek and kills the fish. Uh, you didn't, a lot of people don't know that they would do that or that, that could happen. But so, so our, our goal is to you know, create more awareness and education. So in this handbook, one of the things that was pointed out was septic tanks, that there was more information needed on operation and maintenance, okay? Uh, next, um, next slide, yeah. Um, so following that in 2007, we did a study of the um, septic tank operations and maintenance um, in this, these two county areas. We looked at the rainfall and the soil types, uh, we contracted with the University of South Alabama with their engineering, uh, College of Engineering, and um, they actually went through the hard files in both health departments going back to the 50s. And uh, we found that uh, after all the analysis was done that basically given the rainfall in the soils here, that you should have your septic tank pumped every three to four years for a, a household of two. Okay, next. So we follow that up having that information. We want to do a set of um, uh, septic tank workshops and try to get some more awareness out there. So we had several of them. Uh, examples, we had some in Sarah Land and Foley. We had them at public libraries throughout the two county area. And um, they were kind of low in um, attendance. And But we were able to get some more information from the health departments concerning things like alternative systems and stuff like that. And we were able to provide the public with this type of information. Okay, next. And so another baseline project we were able to launch and, um, and finish up in 2009 was to create an inventory map of the septic tanks within our area. We originally were going to do one for Mobile and Baldwin County, but at the last minute we'd already signed the contracts for the Mobile County side through EPA funds we had, but the NOAA funds got reprogrammed so we weren't able to do um, an inventory for Baldwin County. We still That's still one of our targets, and now, now we're doing that through a watershed um, management plan process. But um, in the interim, we were able to launch this project go forward, and we were going to take on a large project of about 425,000 people at that time. So we um, partnered up with the Alabama Power Company and with the Soil and Water Conservation Districts and the Health Departments and the Alabama On-Site Wastewater Board. Next. And our goal was we knew that the um, Alabama Power had a, um, um, a map of all the um, electric meters for residences throughout the, the, the county. And we also had um, the tax plat. So we married those two layers together and got a good background map, map. And then we contacted all the public utilities within the county and cities and also, you know, utilities themselves and asked for their um, customer list. And we they were able to translate those into shape files and basically assign positions on the map. Next. 
So in this way, we identified every uh, site that we thought that you know was we knew was a uh, uh, made the uh, criteria of having an electric meter and had a, an improved property. And so we designate that as a residential site, and uh, and we also excluded any known commercial sites um, for that. And we went forward and used the uh, utility layer to designate that these were public sewers or utility sewer sites, and we gave them a green dot. Then the remaining sites we assigned a yellow triangle, but we wanted to make sure that that was a, a valid assessment of those those sites. So next. We had been working with the health department since about 2000, and uh, they were UG, they were GPSing every septic tank that went in. So we had about five years, uh, over five years worth of data in each county, and we were able to take that information and compare it to our maps. And then we found out that our maps were about 99% over 99% accurate, which is a, a really successful you know, mapping uh, project. Next, the um, Cool thing is that we were able to get a survey of all the 53 um, drainage areas, hucks within Mobile County, and we were able to, to track every, the number of people. And we had georectified maps and, s and such, so we had good mapping mapping tools here, and we were able to find out that the number of septic tank uh, users, as well as the number of public utility users in each drainage area. Next, and we found that there were 51,000 septic tanks within Mobile County that were being used. And um, there were over 115,000 uh, um, residences that were on public sewer. Um, the main thing is this allowed us to, with these mappings, we were able to uh, work with our partners, which were the, you know, the um, utilities and the, the cities and uh, the counties themselves, and give them good maps and density layers so they could do comprehensive planning. Next. Um, we found these maps were very useful. In fact, a good example was the um, the Alabama Forestry Commission came forward and asked for our data because they were doing a firewise program for rural um, um, residences throughout the county. And so we were able to use this mapping and be able to position their resources and fire protection uh, tools in the best possible places throughout the county. Next. But we had a very successful um, cooperation and partnership with this program. Uh, this is a set of logos of all the cities and utilities that were um, involved in this. Um, couldn't, can't thank the uh, soil water conservation districts or the health departments or Alabama Power for that matter and on-site wastewater board for their help. Um, these, uh, the fundings for this came from uh, ADM 319 and uh, we were able to um, um, basically launch a very successful project. Next. One thing throughout this, um, People have the, understand, uh, the misunderstanding that septic tanks are not um, environmentally sound. Actually, they are. They're very good environmentally. There has been many studies that show how well they treat the water as it goes back to recharge groundwaters and aquifers. Uh, that's the wonderful thing about a septic tank is that you're using the water on site and you're returning it back to the, uh, the aquifer, uh, and so it can be reused and it's not lost to the system. Um, so if these, um, you know, septic tanks are sited properly and uh, maintained properly, then they're very safe and effective. So we're going to focus on the maintenance on the last part of this. And the reason why is it's like your car. If you don't change the oil in your car, it can run for a long, long time. But at some point, it will stop working for you. It won't be your friend. And septic tanks are the same way. They're very... Um, uh, um, they're very unobtrusive. They, you know, they're they're under the ground. They're out of sight, out of mind. They just work, you know, do their thing. And but people forget that they need to be maintenanced. And so that's a very important thing. Also, it's a lot cheaper to maintenance it than it is to buy a new system, much like your car. So we just ask that people, if they would do this, this is you know, um, uh, an ounce of uh, prevention is worth a pound of cure in this place. We also ask that you use certified pumpers. Uh, you can you can go to the Alabama On-Site Wastewater Board uh, website, and they have a list of the certified pumpers for each county, and they're assigned by county. Some of them uh, only work in Mobile County, and some of them um, uh, work in both Mobile and Baldwin and vice versa. So um, but they'll give you a list of the certified pumpers there as well. Uh, also, if you have any questions about that, you can contact the health department. Um, so the um, following that information, we had some good baseline information, so we decided to, to ask the, the federal government to give us some money and we used uh, ADM 319 monies. Uh, we also uh, were able to leverage some local monies through our Gulf Coast RCND Council, 
and we launched a program to provide a um, septic tank pump out for um, the two counties. And this was a no charge voucher program. It had a, a workshop requirement. And so we uh, decided that we, you know, since we knew there were about 65,000 on-site systems in the two counties, we wanted to see how much education and outreach and uh, awareness that we could build through this project. So again, we went to our um, health departments and our Alabama on-site wastewater board and our soil and water conservation districts. They provided a good neutral partner for this. So uh, next, we took the counties and divided them into four sectors based on hydric soils and densities and, and just general need from that, that, that formula. And we started in the south part of the counties and divided them into four sectors. So we have sector one, two, three, four, as you move northward up through the counties. Um, so we held a set of workshops and for each contract period, and we did this over a three-year period. And we held um, public workshops that were free to the public and provided vouchers that were free to the public at that time. Next. Um, so again, we worked with both the soil and water conservation districts and um, we worked very strongly with Alabama On-Site Wastewater Board and the health departments in this, and we're able to provide these free vouchers to the public. Next. Um, our workshops went from November of 2015 to February of 2019. Um, in the four sectors, we were able to um, have over 1,200 people attend, attend our nighttime meetings, and uh, we were able to pump out over 1,000 uh, septic tanks within the two counties. So we think this is a very successful program uh, we're working with various um, entities to see if there's any interest in pursuing this further. Uh, one of the big things is money. Um, we were able to uh, create MOUs with the on-site wastewater board pumpers and you know keep the cost down so that we could maximize our effectiveness. But um, so we have another round of money that's probably coming up in about three years uh, to do a similar project. Uh, but we're also trying in the meantime to work with other entities to do that. Next. Sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. There you go. Okay. That's okay. Anyway, just thank y'all for listening to this foundational information. This kind of pays the bills. It's an acknowledgement to EPA and NOAA that did this, but also to give you an idea of where this came from and why we're doing this sort of thing. Um, we appreciate your, your help. And if you have any questions, then uh, I'll see if there's anything in the chat box here. Yeah, I was about to say if uh, if anybody does have any questions, we got a minute or two before we switch over to Ted. And uh, if you don't, then we will go ahead and, and shift into Ted's uh, presentation. So, thank you, Mark. All right, thanks, Randy. And then I'm uh, still on the call. If y'all need to ask me something, exactly. All right. Uh, so Ted Miker is with the uh, Mobile uh, County Health Department. So Ted, you're uh, you're up. All right, uh, thank you all very much. Um, I am Ted Miker and come July, I will have worked uh, in this department of the health department for 26 years. So um, things have changed a lot in the 26 years of working here. So uh, regulation wise and, and, and enforcement wise. So next. All right, so what is the septic system and why is one used? Well, it's your individual wastewater treatment system at your house. Think of it, it collects the sewage, uh, treats it and disposes. Uh, hopefully if everything's working great, that treatment includes the digestion of solids in the tank, um, depending on number of people, what type of usage and everything. Uh, and uh, it disposes again, disposes of the wastewater there. Uh, and why are they used? It's, well, we're, we're, public sewer doesn't cover our whole county. So there's areas that people want to live uh, that uh, don't have public sewer available. Uh, so they do have to have septic tanks there. Now, hopefully nobody has a tank this size. Uh, that's actually half of a septic tank. And if you can kind of look in the background, uh, the cranes that are being used to do that, that was a 10,000 gallon tank. So uh, if you have that, uh, and having that pumped out, that might be a little bit more than your standard pump out price. So go ahead, next. All right, some components of a septic system Septic system here. Of course, you got your uh, septic tank and your field lines. Um, one thing I wanna point out about this, the plumbing vent on your house, the plumbing on your house and that plumbing vent actually even helps that system work properly 
uh, by allowing the exchange of oxygen through the septic tank out into the field lines um, and, and introduces that oxygen. What we want is in the soil, there's, there's aerobic bacteria that do a real good job of eating all that, the bad stuff that's in affluent, okay? Now, our job when we go out to look at a perk test uh, or a site, do a site evaluation is from the bottom of that trench there, of that drain field, uh, to any type of uh, saturated soils, not groundwater, but saturated soils, because that we know that groundwater uh, fluctuates up and down through the years, so we're not actually digging the actual groundwater. We're looking for changes in the soil colors and uh, characteristics that would indicate to us that there's going to be a saturated condition there for an extended period of time. And then we back up from that 18 to 24 inches. And in that 18 to 24 inches, we got good dry soil and uh, again, aerobic bacteria that helps eat up all those bad critters. Okay, next. All right, some advantages of having a septic system, pretty simple and effective, most of them are. Uh, they're, they're, we're not installing, you know, big sewage treatment plants or having to tear up roads to, to run sewer lines. Um, a lot of expense to operate than centralized treatment facilities. You know, we, you don't have to have constant, uh, uh, somebody there monitoring it and running pumps and making sure pumps are running and everything like that. And again, it, it provides wastewater treatment in areas where uh, it's unavailable. And when they do, when they are functioning properly and we got that proper separation distance, they do help replenish the groundwater. Because um, after that 24 inch area, that 24 inches there, that is going to um, be pretty clean um, uh, affluent there. All right, here's an uh, example of what a septic tank, side view of a septic tank. If you notice here, waste comes in from the house. Uh, we have a scum layer, that's the fats, oils, and greases, things that'll float on top, and then your sludge layer down at the bottom. Uh, midway through, there is a baffle wall, and that helps uh, keep the, most of the sludge back on the inlet side, and also most of the scum layer back on the inlet side. It also helps settle the tank from like, say you, uh, dump a load of um, uh, uh, from the clothes machine, dish, uh, the clothes washer, that kind of helps calm down that wave action in there. Because what we want to have happen is we want that sludge to settle out. We want that scum layer to float. And that middle affluent layer, that's what we want to have mostly liquid in there. Um, and then that's going to work its way out through the affluent pipe or through the outlet side. Next. Here's what a septic tank might look like today. Back in 2002, uh, 2001, they did require all uh, septic tanks to have risers to within six inches of finished grade. Most of the time they're concrete. There are some plastic ones that are, that are manufactured and used now, polypropylene. Um, they're about four foot wide, nine foot long, uh, about five foot deep. Uh, minimum size for a three bedroom house is a thousand gallons. Then on the outlet side of that affluent, uh, on that uh, tank, uh, new systems installed today require an affluent filter to be installed. What that affluent filter is going to do is, if for say some reason you're not really treating that system right, that's going to trap any of the uh, suspended solids where that liquid layer, maybe we don't have, we're not getting our proper settling, so we have some solids that are suspending in there. That's going to go ahead and help uh, trap those solid materials from getting out into the field lines and clogging the soil interface between, again, the bottom of the trench and the, um, and the soil there, because that's where our uh, infiltration is gonna take place. Go ahead, next. When I first started back in 1994, most everything we saw was gravel, uh, uh, gravel field lines, three foot wide, 12 inches deep, 12 inches of cover. Um, but back after Hurricane Katrina, uh, and Ivan, um, it started getting real hard for installers to find good, clean gravel. Um, most places uh, that were the, who they were getting it from, they were having trouble keeping up with the demand of the um, uh, concrete plants. So they stopped washing it because if you're making concrete out of, out of gravel, you want those fines, fills in those spore, pores. But 
gravel that we want is not going to fill in those uh, pores and we're going to get more of a, a open infiltration period area. Um, today, mostly what we see in our area are the chamber systems there. Again, it's just an open area for the fluid to go in and uh, al again, allow oxygen exchange uh, and uh, allow that to soak into that soil, that good, nice uh, dry soil full of aerobic bacteria so that uh, it breaks down all that bad stuff. And then the multi-pipe uh, absorption field there, uh, which is four inch corrugated pipe that's bundled together. So, all right, so how do I know if my system isn't working properly? Maybe, I, how, how do I know if it's not functioning? Maybe it's getting ready to go out or something like that. Well, you might have some wet, mushy spots in the yard, especially around the septic tank. Uh, and if it's a filter that was installed, if it was installed after the filter, that's that filter, if you're abusing that system, that's going to show up at the tank. It's going to protect those field lines. So you might start getting some backup over the tank. All right. Uh, might have some slow draining toilet sinks or tubs, some gurgling sounds, some sewage odors or backups in the house. Now, one thing I want to go back to the um, um, to that vent pipe in your plumbing. Um, just imagine if you were, you know, I, I used to always get in trouble because as a kid, I'd go ahead and have a Coca-Cola and I'm like, oh, this is neat. Put my finger over this this hole here, pull it out and it holds the Coca-Cola in there until I let go of my, th my thumb and then it all pours out. And that's what, again, that that's what that vent pipe will do also if for say some reason you got a lot of trees over the house, uh, sometimes animals fall down in there, um, that'll prevent that system from breathing. That's where you also might get some of those sewage odors in the house um, and, and some slow drains and everything like that. So that's always one thing to check too if you start having some of those issues. Lush green grass uh, growth over the drain field or grass um, in one area of the yard. Now, kind of be careful with that because this time of year, especially now with how dry it's been, you could pretty much ride around and look and see, oh, well, there's their field lines there. It doesn't mean it's failing. It's just because that's where the moisture is going out into the, in, out into the uh, soil. And you do get some evapotranspiration where that's pulling that moisture up. So it will feed that grass better uh, in that area. But if you're walking out there today and, um, you know, your feet footprints are, are um, uh, filling up with water, then yeah, that's, that's probably a sign that that system is in a state of failure. Okay, here's what one failure, here's, here's what a failure may look like. You can see kind of the affluent running off the top of this mound here. Uh, some of the high green grass where they can't get in there to cut um, and it's kind of running off down to the side towards us there. Go ahead next. Here's one, there's the septic tank. You can kind of see the concrete tank uh, sitting uh, with the high green grass all around it and the fluent kind of running off to the side there. Um, here, it looks like they might've tried to bring in some dirt uh, to cover up the uh, issue. Uh, thinking maybe uh, it just needs a little more cover on it, but no, this one was a, was a good failure there. And of course the, the dog in the back barking I'm not sure if he wasn't uh, if he wasn't uh, happy to see us there. Most of the times they're not happy to see us, but this one he might have been happy that we were going to get him a nice dry place to lay down in there. So mm -hmm. next, all right. And then uh, this is something we see a lot uh, where we we're, we're riding out. We look over and we see a pipe that runs off the um, building here. And if you kind of look, there's this is probably it looks like there's a dryer vent there. This is probably a wash machine line. Uh, maybe a, a mop sink or something like that. But um, a lot of times when systems start giving people problems, they think, oh, we'll just take the wash machine line off. But when we see something like this, we'll go out and we'll kind of follow it to the end. Go ahead next. And sure enough, you know, here we go. And it's gray water. Um, it was from wash machine sinks. And and a lot of people say, well, it's just, it's just wash machine water. Well, no, there's still phosphates and there's bacteria in there from your clothes. Uh, that comes off and and nutrients in that um, uh, in the the soaps and detergents you use that can cause issues with the environment. Uh, so so it's still there can be separate wash machine um, lines be installed, but they do have to discharge subsurfacely and they do have to be permitted. All right, next.
So what could be causing some of your failures there if you're having an issue with your system? Maybe using too much gallons, too much water. Uh, most of your systems are designed for 150 gallons per bedroom per day, uh, peak flow. And I say peak flow because uh, normally when we see uh, three bedroom houses, you know, using right at that 450 gallons per day, hey, sometimes they start having problems with that system. Um, but uh, because that system is going to want to work on a wetting and drying process, okay? You use water during the day, go to work, you know, come back, you know, that has a chance to go save, soak down into the ground. Um, there's some ideas on how to save some water, you know, cut off the water, brushing teeth showers instead of bad low flow air uh, aerators on faucets dishwashers um some of them have pots and pans settings some have just regular settings um just make sure they're full because they're going to use the same amount of water on it and one other thing the dishwasher also a lot of them today have a grinder a kind of a a, a, ma a macerator where any food particles it chops it up and sends it on now and uh Again, those food particles, which you, I'm not saying you got to wash your dishes before you put your dishes in the dishwasher, but you know it's not it's not a bad idea to go ahead and have a a, a bag there, scrape the, the any food particles off, uh, and then put it into the dishwasher, uh, because that will again that that using that all those food particles getting out there that increases the strength of the sewage for one thing, and also increases that suspended solids because it chops it up to such a fine. Uh, fine uh, size particles. Next, physical damage, uh, you know, trees growing, um, um, tree roots getting into them. Um, normally what we try to do in that in the siding of a system uh, is look for, uh, you know, an area away from trees. Now there's sometimes you just, you know, they're completely full of trees and, <laughs> you know, there's nothing you could do to avoid it. But um, kind of looking at that when you're when you're siding one or or figuring out how where you're going to build your house and what trees to, to leave there, uh, traffic flow, people driving over field lines, septic tanks, uh, that causes a lot of problems. And again, don't build anything over it because uh, you want to be able to get to that septic tank, have it pumped out. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, uh, those field lines aren't built over because you get that evapotranspiration to uh, pull some of that moisture out of those lines also. Next, and lack of maintenance. And the uh, thing is with that is uh, pumping your septic system is probably the most important thing uh, to help prolong the life of your septic system. Uh, again, it's like changing that oil. Because what happens is those, those solids build up, that scum layer builds up, and then that starts getting out into the lines that's causing your problems. Um, one other thing is that the tanks are equipped with baffles, that baffle, and when they pump it, they'll look at that. If it's in poor condition, a lot of times they'll talk with you about replacing that. And a lot of your pumpers, they've been doing this for so long. When they open that tank up and start pumping, they could say, hey, look, you probably need to watch what you're doing with this or, you know, looks like you're doing good. Um, but it's almost, again, getting that, getting all that old stuff out there and kind of seeing how you're doing with uh, uh, on how you're doing maintaining your system those installers can do that it's almost like they're reading tea leaves you know so go ahead next all right so well my system is failing my septic system is failing though well, so what you know well you know we have one third of the u.s population in mobile county like randy said 31 percent so in the U.S., over one trillion gallons of wastewater are disposed below the ground surface, okay? Now, if we don't have that proper um, separation distance, if we're not getting everything to go in the ground, we're going to have that, uh, that affluent, when it rains, it's going to run off that location, it's going to run to the ditch, and then eventually to a creek, a stream, and then out to the bay, uh, out to the gulf, um, you know, causing problems with polluted surface water. Uh, if we don't have that proper siding with that separation distance, um, we don't, we're not getting that affluent treated well before it hits groundwater, um, because once it does hit groundwater, it's, it's no longer treated, it's just diluted. All right, next. Another thing is, uh, you know, the, the effect of uh, having a failing system on your, on your wallet. Um, you know, not maintaining that system and that leading to failure 
you know, you're looking at anywhere from three to 12, and I think some systems today up to $15,000. Um, and also they can reduce property values. Um, we had a subdivision way out near the Mississippi line, and they had maybe five, six systems installed, and, and well, it's over a couple hundred houses, but five or six systems failed, and there was a big thing in the newspaper, and it was a starter, kind of a starter home subdivision. Um, big thing in the newspaper, Sewageville. Well, it just happened that there were some uh, issues on the installation and things getting crushed by people coming in with the brick trucks and everything after the systems were installed. And, um, you know, that, that it was a hard time to for that subdivision to recover where people were able to, you know, everybody would say, oh, no, you don't want to move there. They got all kinds of problems with septic systems. But it was just, again, five or six of them and, you know, gets a bad bad name for an area and then you you know property values will start people people won't want to be uh, moving into that area go ahead next and then uh, just and then just remember once the system fails it's usually too late just to pump it um you know a new system has to be constructed go ahead next and and here's kind of an example why what happens when the system fails when that starts going when we don't have that good uh aerobic bacteria there um it starts building up anaerobic bacteria takes over and they do they're not really good at breaking uh, stuff down and but they eat a lot and when they eat then they die and uh, what happens is they form when they die off they form that thick black goo it's called biomat okay um, when things get when it gets real uh, thick like you see kind of in these pictures here um, that's almost like slapping tar on there and nothing's going to get through that um, and if you can look at the shovel there, uh, that would be one that's a soil that I would look at and go, hey, that's pretty sandy, uh, no issues with, uh, with uh, uh, moisture problems. That should be 20 years down the road before we even come back out and have to look at this one again. Well, this was one of the ones where there was some damage done during the construction phase. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it caused that system to fail. You can see the old gravel lines up there, how bad, how, when those failed, they just, it just seals it up. Nothing can get out of there. Go ahead, next. All right, some things to do. We're talking about maintaining the system and proper, you know, usage. Um, have the system pumped by a licensed pumper uh, according to the suggested schedule. And like we said, like Randy said, every three to four years, um, you know, again, more people in the house, you might want to pump it uh, more often. Uh, less people, you might be able to stretch it out a little bit. Uh, but a lot of it depends on how you, what you're doing, uh, or what you're using, everything like that. Um, you know, they do at that time. That pumper can put that effluent filter in. Um, again, the, the having that filter on there that helps protect the field lines if you are abusing the system. It's going to show at the uh, at the tank side before it gets out and uh, out into the field line. Um, repair all leaking plumbing fixtures. Uh, important thing about that is we've had leaks about the size of your finger. Uh, that you know, it's a new system six months old uh, causes it to fail because again, the system is designed to operate on that wetting and drying cycle. Um, when you constantly saturate that that soil interface with effluent, then you start running into problems with that. Again, saturation drives out the aerobic bacteria, anaerobic bacteria take over and start you start getting that biomat buildup. So any any plumbing fixtures leaking, uh, get those taken care of. Most common ones are the, that toilet in that back bedroom or in that back bathroom that kind of keeps filling up and draining, filling up and draining. So. And then again, keep any records of any repairs, pumping, uh, inspections, or other maintenance activities, and pass those on to the next homeowner so they can kind of see where, where where you're at in that, um, uh, in, in how how well you've been doing keeping up with it. Go ahead, next. Again, conserve water. Uh, the, when when we've what Randy was saying, those pump out voucher meetings that we had previously, this is the one where I would say, okay, so. So don't raise your hand, but whose wash day is Saturday, you know, and, and you don't really want to, and, and everybody would kind of look at each other and go and just kind of, kind of like, uh-oh, uh, get an uh-oh look on their face. 
Well, what happens is, you know, if you do wait Saturday, Sunday as being the day to do all the laundry in the house, you're, you're dumping a whole bunch of water out there. Um, you know, again, 150 gallons per day per bedroom. Um, but you're dumping a whole bunch of water out there that could short circuit it. And then also just think about that, just sloshing that up. It really doesn't give that tank a chance to settle. Doesn't give your, your solids a chance to foot to sink and then your, your scum layer to, to flow down the top. Um, so you want to do that maybe like one, lo one load, two loads a day, one in the morning, one in the evening. That is a bad idea. Uh, of course, rainwater gutters, uh, gutter drains, keep those away from the drain field. Um, keep the septic cover accessible um, so that it can be pumped out and, and all make sure those uh, lids are secure. Uh, and then if anything ever happens, you know, call your health department or licensed septic tank contractor. You know, we, we are here to, to help. Um, that's one of the greatest things is when we get it, we get a situation, we don't know what's going on and we can figure it out and, and get that system back to working for you. Next, all right, some things not to do. Garbage disposals, um, you know, garbage disposals will increase your solids in your tank by the 50%. If you have one of those and you use it pretty regularly, you may need to have your tank pumped out uh, uh, at least once a year, okay? Now, I have a garbage disposal at the house I live in. It's on septic tank. But again, like I said, I go ahead and I scrape everything off my plate and I, I might just bump that thing once or twice if if it's slow draining, if in case of, you know any unknown food particle gets in there. Um, but you, you don't wanna, I, I lived on a house, I also lived in a house that was on public sewer and I had a garbage disposal and it was like, Hey girls, my daughters would come visit and say, hey, I think these eggs are bad. You wanna see how many we can fit down here in the garbage disposal and kick it out and see if it works. So you don't wanna do that, okay? Um, again, don't allow anybody to drive over your system or compact the, the soil. Uh, don't build anything over it. We want that sun to get on there, uh, cover your drain field. Uh, you know, don't do that. Again, that evaporation. Sprinkler system, underground utilities, um, especially, if you know where your system is and you're getting somebody coming out to run new cable lines or, or, you know, a lot of gas companies are expanding now and going out into different areas, just be real careful, make sure they know where it's at so they don't cut right through your field lines. We have had uh, systems do that and they don't know they did it. Nobody knows they did it. And, you know, it just kind of gets all covered back up. And then there's a failure out there, you know, two years down the road. And then of course, swimming pools near your system, in-ground pools, um, 10 foot away. Uh, if you're installing a swimming pool, please contact the health department here. We may have records of that installation. Uh, if not, we can kind of direct you to uh, uh, an installer, you know, use an installer to kind of come out and find a location. Because just right now, uh, we have a system going in today. They went out to install a pool. They thought they knew where the pool was first first bucket they put in the ground to dig it, they hit this field line. So um, they didn't, didn't call before they dug. All right, and then uh, don't wanna put uh, separate wash machine lines or dishwashers. Again, they contain germs and pathogens and viruses um, and the, the nutrients that could cause problems with our, uh, with our surface waters. And make sure that you use a licensed installer, make sure it's permitted, um, you know, don't use, well, my Uncle Joe used this guy down the street last year and he did a good job. Well, um, normally they don't put in what's supposed to be put in. And uh, or also somebody in the neighborhood knows they're supposed to have a permit. And they're out there working on a Saturday. They call us Monday. And we have to come out and investigate and take action through the Alabama Onsite Wastewater Board through license installers and everything. And um, can't say how many times I've, I've had to go for the homeowner to Montgomery to testify in front of the Alabama Onsite Wastewater Board uh, about somebody who did an illegal repair and they, they really just took the money from the people and really did about $200 worth of work and it didn't work. Um, another thing is do not waste anything on additives, uh, you know, to add to that system. Uh, all the bacteria that you need is present in, in, in our guts and all. Um, as a matter of fact, sometimes it, 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 
Um, it could cause problems. Uh, there was a, a study done in New York where they, along the turnpike up there, uh, and their septic system, they were on septic systems. It was in a more rural area. And they added, you know, first one, they added nothing to it. And then all the way down the line, they added different, um, uh, different commercially available additives to it. And what they found after going through this was that there was not much of a difference in the breakdown of the, the sludge layer or the scum layer. And those that were, it increased suspended solids in that affluent layer, that liquid zone that we want going out into the field lines. And again, that's, we don't want that to happen there. So go ahead, next. Um, simple, simple uh, way to wrap up this, that slide there is don't use your pull it as a trash can, even if you're on public sewer, um, you know, don't do that. The, the, a lot of public sewer companies have issues with that. Um, and flushable wipes, they are flushable, but they don't break down, okay? They're gonna be in there and when they get into a septic tank, they just form a big ball, mess up that settling action of the tank. And, uh, you know, that it almost, it almost forms like a, a giant sponge in there and to have that pumped out, it, it's, it's pretty costly. Go ahead, next. All right, the, um, some other things not to do, you know, chemicals, paint thinners, pesticides, anything like that down your drain. Um, detergents, cleaners and detergents. Um, you know, I, I, I used like, you know, Few few splashes of bleach for my whites and you know towels and stuff like that, but you know don't don't go ahead and pour a whole cup in cup and a half two cups half gallon you know and there are some other things out available today your cleaners and, and detergents that are more uh, environmentally friendly uh, more biodegradable uh, less less harsh to to the environment and again to your septic system and never enter into the septic tank because gases from that. Um, and there's there's hydrogen sulfide in there, and that can uh, 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 can kill you. All right, Isle of Isle Onsite Wastewater Board. That's the licensing authority for installers and pumpers, and they do have updated rosters of all licensed and bonded installers and pumpers. Uh, you can go to their website and search by county of operation or base county. And one reason why we do say go ahead and make sure you do go ahead next use licensed uh, installers. Um, this is a gentleman here. Uh, he's no longer in business, of course, but had a had a lady who would call her off and say, every morning he's out here dumping sewage in his backyard, dig a hole and dump sewage in the backyard. Well, of course, he knew what time we started and everything. So I said, okay, ma'am, well, I'll tell you what, the next time you see him, go ahead and call me. Um, gave her my personal cell phone. Sure enough, within about a couple of days, she calls me. He's out here. So before work, liquidly split ran, liquidly split ran over there, and we were able to get some video of him. Sure enough, uh, there he was, dug a hole in his backyard, had the backhoe there, uh, sewage tank pumper truck, backed up into it, and and dumped the load right there. And you know that's kind of bad enough, but he had goats, sheep, all out here in the field, uh, about 50 foot over on the other side of the tractor. There was. Uh, um, swim and pull and on about about 30 by 16 foot swim and pull in ground swim and pull and then on the other side of that was his house so you know just just obviously he's no longer in business we took legal action he's no longer in business so but that's all i got so uh thank you very much if any questions or and we do have uh one question uh in terms of the how does toilet uh, paper affects your system, your septic tank system, just to respond to that a little bit. I started getting worried here recently when I was going into stores in Sarah Land and all I saw were the real quilted, uh, you know, high price soft stuff. Uh, um, the, the Really, you want to be, you know, the, the toilet paper, uh, use something that's, that's, to, that's septic tank soft. Uh, or septic tank approved uh, Scott paper, you know, no, no, just, just, it breaks down real easy in there. Um, a lot of your quilted softer stuff, there's two ways they get those softer. 
One way is they use a, a plastic polymer uh, that they put on there. And that plastic polymer um, doesn't break down in there. Okay, uh, it, it still stays there. So that's not really one that that's that's good for use in there. And another way is they use longer wood fibers. Um, and um, the longer wood fibers do eventually break down, but but they're a lot slower than than the good, you know, than than your basic Scott toilet paper. You know, it's just uh, unfortunately, so what what feels good sometimes isn't what's good for for the uh, for the septic system. So, all right, thank you, Ted. Um, any other uh, questions? Um, actually, I just have one here. Uh, can you install a new tank? Uh, in South Baldwin, or must it be city water? Is the question that was asked. Okay, um, and and I'll reply from what I know here in Mobile County. Okay, there are if public sewer is available, the Mobile County Building Inspection, their um, plumbing code requires connection to public sewer. Okay, uh, whether it's due, um, whether it's repair. Um, if it's uh, in certain municipalities, uh, City of Mobile has that same regulation. City of Saraland, City of Pritchard, City of Criola, uh, they have those same parts in their codes. Baldwin County, uh, I would think, I would, I would have to defer, I, I couldn't say for sure, but I know Baldwin County does have county building inspections departments, so I might contact them and say, hey, if public sewer is available, do I have to hook on or can I install uh, or build on a septic system? All right, that's a great point. And as a matter of fact, uh, if uh, the person who's asked that question, um, if they want to send me an email, we actually have, um, I can put you in con connection with the people over there. Um, this, this today's session was mostly focused on Mobile County. And so that we will have the other one uh, next Wednesday at two o'clock. Um, uh, but I can at least get you connected to that person. So uh, any other questions for uh, today uh, for Ted or for Randy? Um, any uh, known assistance programs for pumping? Uh, Randy, I know you had mentioned that y'all are going to try to do that in the next at least three years. Uh, uh, any other uh, information you can share about that for assistance with the pumping? Um, no, not at this point in time. We've uh, this is a re what we did originally was seed money and pilot project, and just to see if what kind of interest we could generate. We are talking to various um, entities in terms of uh, with a watershed management planning process, and we're trying to find out you know if there are municipalities that are interested in. Uh, leveraging funds and helping with that, but uh, currently, right now, no. We will probably be about three years out before we see, we see another program like that. Uh, but we're we're crossing our fingers and hoping to persuade others that it's a good. We thing. will. Alabama Coastal Foundation will definitely promote it if whenever that does happen next. So um, we do have our final workshop for this series uh, Wednesday, May 27th, a week from today at two o'clock. It's going to focus on Baldwin County. Uh, we will be sending an evaluation to everybody, so please uh, take a moment to fill that out. And I really do appreciate uh, y'all for participating and then Randy and Ted for presenting yet once again. Uh, we'll have this on the video, and if you want to watch the video later on, you can uh, let us know that as well. But uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you need anything from uh, Alabama Coastal Foundation, please go to our website, joinacf.org. Otherwise, uh, we're going to wrap this workshop up and wish you all a, a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.